Hello everyone and welcome to Hearts of Iron 4, where, well, we take control of any nation at the eve of World War II and try to guide it through these troublesome times ahead of us. Well, this is the latest entry in a long line of grand strategy games by Parallax Development Studio. I did play most of them, the latest at least. I did play Europa Universalis 4 for a long, long time. And also quite a bit of Crusader Kings and Victoria, and recently, of course, Stellaris, which may or may not end up happening on the channel too. But I didn't play any Hoi 3, so I'm going into this mostly blind. I did play for about five hours to find my bearings, because yeah, the Paradox games are kind of notorious for having a steep learning curve and somewhat unintuitive interfaces. So yeah, I think we can just go ahead and get started without any further ado. We do have the choice between two starting dates. We can choose to go from 1936, which is gives us the opportunity to shape our country for a little while. Or we can go from 39, which is right at the brink of war breaking out. But yeah, we're, we're going to be going for the long the long road here. The game isn't too long after all. It ends in 48, I think. But as opposed to other Paradox titles, one unit of simulation, one simulation step, is an hour in this game, another day, like in others. But we'll, we'll get to all that. Now, here we have all of our big players across the world, but none of these interest me for this run. So let's take a look at the world map. Oh yeah, there they all are. There's the Soviets, the Polish, the Germans, the French, and the Spanish are there too. Pre-revolutionary. And all the rest of them. And what we shall do is we shall set our eyes on the Persian region. Because I, for some reason, I always had a soft spot for this Persia, Mesopotamia region in all of the Paradox games that featured it. So, yeah, I'm gonna try to do something with the Iran. And maybe form some some greater Persia. Uh, well, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. <coughs> we'll, we'll leave it on regular for now. I don't feel quite confident to go for veteran difficulty here. Ironman will be enabled, sure, why not? Also, historical AI focuses... What this means is that the great powers will try to pursue their goals in more of a historical fashion. So the Germans will press for Austria, and then for the Czech, and then for Poland later on. And they'll try to, uh, to go with a more historical path. And I think we'll we'll go with with that. So yeah, there's really not much more to say. We'll just press the start button. Iron Man Iran. Well, let's let's just call it what it will be. It will be Greater Persia. So let's wait while the game loads itself, and there we are, right into it. Now. I should probably put a little disclaimer here, since we are going to play, most likely, as a fascist nation here, as a fascist government. I harbor no sympathies for nationalism, or any kind of factionalism for that matter, in real life. But that won't stop me from role-playing as the fascist leader of Persia during this campaign. So if you, I don't know, decide to feel offended politically, by any of my utterances, I'm afraid the joke's on you. So, yeah. Alright, with that out of the way, let's hop right into it. What's our situation? We're playing Iran, the Iran. We are under the sole and total control of the Pahlavi dynasty. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly. We're the Shah, the Shah of Persia, Reza Pahlavi. And 
yeah, where where exactly are we? We militarily militarily we are pathetic. We have three divisions. We have a total of eighteen thousand soldiers on the ground. We have two. Th we have an uh, an air force. That's that's a surprise. So we have seventy two fighters and some close air support. Uh, close air support standing by here. No, we'll we'll get to that eventually. Now let's first try to formulate a little plan here. So up to our north is of course Big Brother Joseph with the Soviet Union. And they are communists. But I think it would be more in the spirit of the of the game here to go with fascism. So, extreme nationalism it is, rather than communism. But that will... Well, it might put me at odds with the Soviets, but I think we can we can work with that. What I will... The problem I will have, however, is... Territorial expansion. So I have to be quick about it before the Soviets try to take any of this land for themselves, if they try to do that. Another question is, obviously, do I join the Axis or don't I? I mean, I can, I can found my own faction, which may or may not be good. The problem if we join the Axis is, well, if the Germans go to war with the Soviets, then, well, <laughs> there are the Soviets. They have somewhere between 72 and 188 divisions on the ground then an astonishing number of of planes and we don't we have three brigades as observed just a minute ago so yeah we, we probably don't want to butt heads with with the Soviet Union anytime soon hmm let's find out who we can but heads with Afghanistan or Eastern neighbors. They do have somewhere in the neighborhood of seven to eleven brigades, divisions rather. The Iraq, however, only has two. And I'm kind of feeling that this music is a little too loud. It is great music, as in most paradox games, but I think I'm gonna tune it down just a little bit. All right, there we go. So yeah, Iraq is going strong with two divisions. Now it's not guaranteed that'll that'll remain that way, but well, we don't have much else to do. It's either we attack Afghanistan or the Iraq. We don't have any ships, mind you, do we? No, no navy, so we couldn't even do a proper naval invasion. I think I didn't play with naval stuff too much, so gonna have to figure that out as we go along. But I think, yeah, it's either gonna be Iraq or Afghanistan. British Raj isn't actually that strong on its own, but of course it starts as a member of the Allies, if memory serves, yes. So I would be fighting, well, Canada and all of the British Commonwealth if I were to attack them, which is probably not a good idea. So Iraq or Afghanistan it is. I don't think we can, no, we can't forge a claim or justify a war goal, as it's called here, just yet. So if we are, we're currently non-aligned, which is just to say we're neither fascist nor communist nor democratic. And as such, we need the world tension to be 50% before we can start going to war ourselves. And the word tension is just, well, pretty much was it what it says on the tin. It's some, some measurement of how, how bad things are going in the world. All right. So continuing on with the state of affairs. We have our national focus tree. 
and this is the great the great nations have specialized national foci for curses which from which from which they can choose so for instance uh, Russia would have the option to complete the five year plan Germany would have the option to uh, to press for for Austria or to press for Danzig later on down the line but we we're not so historical we have a bunch of bunch of generic stuff that's nay too shabby however we will make do with that now most a lot of these things grant us research bonuses so for instance with doctrine effort here we get one a one time research bonus of 50% for any research in the land doctrine category and we'll get to that in a minute but i think what interests me most is this extra research slot and then the second one although we can't do that yet because it says we need more factories than 50 and we have a grand total of five so we're quite a ways away from that but i definitely want to make a beeline for the extra research slot mm, what does that lead us through infrastructure i think is only good for supply limit in the provinces so not too hot on that but civilian factories are pretty nice early on so i think we'll just go directly down this up to the extra research slot and then we'll We'll see where we go from there. Now, every national focus takes precisely 70 days to complete and costs you a bit of your political power, which for the most part of the early game is the most important currency. Later on, it tends to be more bound by manpower. But yeah, let's just start, start going ahead with the industrial effort. Now, we can monitor the national focuses of our neighbors here and we will want to do that in order to find out what they're up to and what their strengths and weaknesses may be now we also have research which is something else from the national focus we have all these categories we have the green ones are essentially our army army related techs this is navy and the air force and this is infrastructure in the widest sense now what do we want to go with here i think our national focus awards us with one yeah it's one research bonus for industry so industry would be this so yeah i think since we don't don't have the luxury of fabricating claims just yet we might as well build up our country a tad Let's go with basic machine tools, which will raise our production efficiency cap, which means just producing more stuff. And then also some engineering for faster research. Although let's have a quick look. How are we sitting here? So we do have some stuff researched. We have some weapons at least. We don't know about how to build trucks just yet. Mm. We also don't know about any support equipment, so we can't have any engineers or recon troops, so to say scouts in our armies. No tanks too, not even the ones from 1918. We do have artillery researched, which is quite nice. No doctrine effort. All of these are mutually exclusive and essentially focus your army down a, a specific path. So this is the your classic Blitzkrieg doctrine this is essentially having bigger guns this is having good planning and this is having well, just a lot of men all right so navy well, i don't care about navy yet, right now and air superiority <clears throat> is all the same to me as well so yeah i think those two infrastructure related texts are going to be the name of the game here what else? 
three civilian factories. All right, now civilian factories are used for quite a bit. Most importantly, to, well, build new buildings, build new factories, civilian and military-like. A set percentage of these will also be used for consumer goods, so you can use them, and you can also use civilian factories to trade in for raw materials. And I think we'll need to get to that momentarily. What I will want to do... Now let's, let's get to that right now. Let's have a quick look. So we have one military factory, and we'll, we're using it to produce infantry equipment along here. And for that, we need steel. We need two. We don't have any. Pretty much, yeah, the only thing we have around here... What's the map mode? Like seven? Yeah. The only thing we have around here is oil. Nothing else. So, yeah. You can import things, however, and for that you go to trade, and you select, all right, we have, we need steel. We need two of it, and then we can choose from whom to import. Mm, and I think in the interest of good relations, it would be a workable idea to trade with the Soviet Union whenever we can, because I think trade does affect relations. So we are now essentially sending the production of one uh, civilian factory to the Russians and they in turn are sending us steel, which will arrive shortly and then be used to produce guns. Alright, so we do have one civilian factory remaining what do we want to do with that? I think in the spirit of building up the country at the beginning, I do want to build another civilian factory. It says it will complete in the 7th of December 1940, which is quite a ways away. However, I don't think that'll be the case, because down this path we get another one, two civilian factories, and there's another construction effort down here, which I think we'll take after the extra research slot, and that gives us another two civilian factories. So yeah, I think that'll <clears throat> that'll be fine. We'll produce, we'll build one civilian factory, and then we'll see how how we look after that. All right, our army. We have no divisions in basic training. We have quite a quite a bunch of men available for recruitment. We don't have so many so much infantry equipment but let's just start training a couple of guys maybe about five. I want them to pop out oh, don't think I did that right. I want them to pop out left click near the Iraqi border and let's also take you guys put you into an army Put someone in charge. Oh, we already have a general. It's Hassan Arfa. And he's a desert fox. He has 5% movement, 10% attack, and 10% defense in the desert. Mm. Unfortunately, most of this isn't desert. It's a lot of hilly terrain. There's a lot of desert going on down here. So once we invade the Saudis... There's going to be a bunch of that. There's also a desert over here. So maybe we should invade Afghanistan first. I oh, will see about that. I think for the time being we'll just posture around the Iraqi border. So for that we set a front line. And this is, this is a very nice thing. I like this a lot about this game. The way that this battle plan thingy works. So I can just set this attack order and say all right I want I want you to start on this line and then I want you to end up here and I can also drag this one and say all right I don't want you to end up specifically in that province but I want you to end up somewhere along this line so maybe I want to I don't know stay behind this river so I would draw def an offensive line like this and that would mean when I'm also over here now try to take these provinces in order to uh, extend my border from here to there. And 
Yeah, you can really do a lot of clever things with this. I don't want any of that for the time being. I just want my guys to be lined up around uh, the general border area. I also, also probably don't want cavalry in here. So far as I can tell, cavalry is only good for only good for uh, suppression, that is, governing occupied territory. So yeah, it's most of the same stats here. With a bit... They're a bit better organized, but they do take up more weapons. And yeah, I don't think, don't think that'll work the way I wanted to, so let's change them to infantry. That loses them some experience, but we're gonna train the whole lot anyway to get ourselves some army experience and to level them up. And I think that should be about all that we need to do before, well, unpausing and actually getting into the game. So yes, in the next episode we'll take a look at how we actually fared through our first few months and where we can situate ourselves. So until then, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I've been described and I shall see you soon.